So I took some time to consider Apple's announcements at their September 2015 event and I wanted to do that so that I could give you my considered opinion about all of the products that they announced. Now in this video I want to talk to you about each of the products individually starting off with the Apple TV which Apple actually said is the future of television. Now I own a current generation Apple TV and to be honest I don't use it that often. I use my Amazon Fire TV stick a lot more often because I'm an Amazon Prime member and I subscribe to that service and then watch movies and exclusive TV series basically. The Apple TV I do like but I only really use it when there's an Apple event. I don't use it for a lot more than that. But the new Apple TV does have some really nice features. Of course they announced that you're now going to be able to install apps which is really good you know this is going to turn the Apple TV into a real media entertainment center and I sort of call myself a casual gamer so being able to actually install games on the Apple TV I think is going to be of interest to me of great interest uh, you know just being able to purchase a game for a couple of pound and then play it on the large screen and I think developers will really take advantage of the new hardware and deliver some fantastic games I really do so I'm super excited about the new Apple TV I sort of in a way begrudge spending my money on one purely because I'm uncertain as to whether I'm going to get the use out of it but certainly the things that they introduced and the smart searches that were demonstrated during the presentation were really good indeed. They've got this new remote as well, which allows you to do voice searches via Siri. Uh, they, they also announced TVOS, which is what they're calling the operating system on the Apple TV as well. Now the remote looks cool. The actual hardware itself a little tiny bit bigger than the existing Apple TV in height only. Uh, and it just looks really good. Just touching again on this and pardon the pun, touching again on the Apple remote, it does have a touch area up the top end of the remote where you can swipe and uh, make gestures, etc. So that's going to be good. It gives you more interactivity with the uh, new Apple TV. Now this is coming soon. It's not available to order yet. Uh, and it does look good. I will get one in to have a look at, but I'm not sure if I will really keep it and, and use it. Time will tell. We'll see how things pan out. Now before I move on to talk about the iPad Mini 4, which was also announced, I just want to let you know what I'm recording this with. A lot of people always ask in the comments section. So I'm using a Brother NW1000 Full HD uh, webcam to record this with. And I'm also testing out the built-in microphones, so the Brother microphones. So for those of you who are interested in this particular product, I will leave a link in the video description. So let's move on. Let's talk about iPad Mini 4. Now, I've had iPad Minis before into the studio to test. It's not a form factor for me. I'm going to tell you that straight away. I always wanted the larger screen. I primarily use my iPad for media consumption. I do create some things on it. I use it with pages on occasion. And I use it for photo editing on occasion as well. When I had the iPad Mini in before, it was purely just the size, you know, it wasn't targeted towards me. I prefer a bigger screen. So the iPad Mini 4 is primarily the same as the previous iPad Mini, but with the uh, power or the internals of the current iPad Air 2. So you're going to get that sort of performance transitioned across to the iPad Mini 4. And this is available to buy now. So this is launched straight away. It's not a pre-announcement. And it looks gorgeous. As expected, it's available in three colours, the silver, the gold, which gets my thumbs up, and the space grey. 6.1 millimetres, uh, 299 grams, so a nice lightweight device. And I can see why people like it. It's a very portable device, uh, super cool device. I know David DeFranco, uh, he uses an iPad mini and absolutely loves it. So for those of you who like this smaller form factor, I think you're going to be really impressed because the performance has been upgraded. Uh, we've got really good cameras in there as well, great for sort of doing FaceTime and of course video. Uh, we've got the fingerprint sensor in it as well, that's transitioned across obviously from the iPad Air 2. Really nice fast wireless connectivity 
and just a great experience. So if you want a smaller form factor tablet, then the iPad mini 4 is definitely worth buying. When I look at Apple products, because I really love them, I, I, I love the design, I love the quality, I love the whole experience. With the iPad mini, I sort of am disappointed that I don't want to buy one. I'm not going to get one in, or not straight away. I might try and get one in just to review, but for myself, it's just not for me. And I, I still really wish I liked it, but alas, it's, it's not going to be a particular product that I'm going to buy. So let's move on to the iPad Pro. Da, da, da. Amazing. This is something that I talked about on Twitter and my other social networks. I really uh, predicted this happening. There were a lot of rumours pointing towards it anyway. And for a long time I said that Apple should do something to challenge Microsoft's Surface Pro range of tablets. I love the Surface Pro. I love the kickstand. I love the keyboard. The stylus is good as well. And the operating system is not for me. So the fact that Apple have actually launched iPad Pro is absolutely fantastic. This is a much larger device, uh, a really high power device, 12.9 inch retina display, uh, really cool. It is gonna be fantastic. This display has got 5.6 million pixels and because of the power inside this new iPad Pro, apparently you can edit 4K video. I think they mentioned three concurrent streams or channels of 4K video. That is amazing, absolutely amazing. It's got an A9X chip, so a, a desktop class chip, uh, 1.8 times CPU performance and double the graphics performance of the current iPad Air 2. That is absolutely amazing. Now I don't recall them saying how much RAM was in here. Uh, I think it will probably have three gigabytes, if not four gigabytes. Let's hope it's got at least three gigabytes anyway. Uh, they also announced some peripherals alongside it, this uh, keyboard case and also the Apple Pen. So we have got a stylus for this. Available in three colours, as you can see here, the gold, the space grey and the silver. I will be getting a gold one in. And capacities run all the way up to, I think it was 128 gigabytes. That's going to be epic. It really is. I am so looking forward to this. This is a picture of the new smart keyboard. Now, of course, with the Microsoft Surface Pro, which is this is obviously going to be compared to, uh, the keyboard magnetically clips on. Not sure how this attaches. I think it's a magnetic sort of latch. But this folds out so that you can actually then encase your iPad into the smart keyboard, so it acts as a case as well. And then when it's in this configuration, obviously you've got a superb typing angle for some real productivity. And then this is the Apple Pencil. Uh, this again looks fantastic. Rechargeable, uh, just a superb looking device. And it, it looks as though it's gonna interact really nicely with the new iPad Pro. In fact, in this picture you can see on your screen now, you can see some little magnetic sort of uh, attachment points where that keyboard's gonna latch on to the iPad Pro. It just looks fantastic. Of course, we've got fingerprint sensor, we've got the eyesight and FaceTime HD cameras. So it's gonna be great for uh, doing uh, social networking, communicating with family members, and if you're doing business conferences, etc. Uh, there's Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi Plus LTE models. So a, a really good announcement. I'm super excited for this, and I will be getting one in. I'll be going for the top end one, it's not going to replace my Retina MacBook Pro, but it might well replace a lot of my other devices when I travel. Uh, if I need to travel light, I'll see how this works with the larger screen, but I'm going to be super excited about it and really keen to try its video editing capabilities. That's going to be one of the main things that I try. Moving on, iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, the larger one of course, this is the smartphone that everyone knew was going to be announced at this event. They have given us more or less the same form factor. They've given us new screen technology with this new 3D touch, which in all intents and purposes is force touch. So you can interact with the apps that you use on your iPhone by uh, applying different amounts of pressure to the screen. Still got the uh, sort of same fingerprint sensor. 
available in this new rose gold, which looks very pinky to me. It looks a very pink color, uh, but it's called rose gold. Uh, we've also got silver, of course, and space gray. Uh, we've got uh, this new multi-touch that they're talking about, the 3D touch you can see on your screen here. That looks awesome. It allows people to interact with the smartphone in so many more different ways but without having to sort of make the user interface any more cluttered. So that's really good, absolutely love it. I love the way you can also sort of peek into things and then pop them out full screen. I also like the demonstration they gave for accessing other apps that are already running where you can just sort of force touch on the side and then swipe across. I thought that was really cool. One of the things that really piqued my interest, of course, was the new camera. 12 megapixel rear facing camera, five megapixel front facing camera, 4K video capture, really good. Really pleased that they announced this. Uh, it was a long time coming, um, but Apple do wait, and they also make sure they really do deliver a, a good experience when it comes to the camera performance, because a lot of people regard, including myself, the iPhone range as being the best quality smartphone camera available. So we've gone up to 12 megapixels and 4K video capture. That's really cool. Uh, we've also got the A9 processor in here as well, so we've got increased performance, both CPU and GPU performance. It looks absolutely fantastic, it's going to be great for gaming as well. The design, same as before, so we've still got that nice thin form factor, 5.5 inch or 4.7 inch screen in the two different models. Uh, we've also got Touch ID, as in the previous model. Uh, faster 4G LT, faster Wi-Fi as well, and it just looks absolutely amazing. I'm so excited for this. I will be getting both the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus into the studio to test. Personally, I'm not sure which one I'm going to keep. I was talking to my daughter about this over the past week, and I'm really considering switching to the iPhone 6S Plus. I currently use an iPhone 6, the smaller version. Uh, she's got the iPhone 6 Plus, and I'm thinking this might be the time to change. So I'm going to get both in, uh, one on review and one I'm going to purchase, and I hope the one I purchase, which is going to be the iPhone 6S Plus, which I'm buying with my own money, uh, is going to be the one that I prefer because then I can just keep that without having to send it back and exchange it. Uh, but I'm just super excited. Now, we've only got a few days to wait to pre-order this. We can pre-order it on Saturday, the 12th of September. And uh, then I believe it delivers and is in stores on the 25th of September, 2015. So really good. Of course, they got accessories so that you can... Uh, put it in a case, there's going to be other accessories available as well. It just looks like a fantastic device, it really does. And I am just super excited for it, I can't emphasize enough. I use my iPhone 6 all the time. It allows me to do so much, as it does with you guys as well that already own an iPhone. It's just a mini computer in your pocket. And these upgrades, yes, it is a very similar device, but they've improved a lot. Uh, I love the fact that they've included the 3D touch, 4K video as well. That was obviously a highlight for me. Let me know in the comments section below what the highlight for you is. Uh, you know, what's the best feature in these new upgrades of the iPhones for you? Let me know about the other products as well. Will you be getting an iPad Mini 4? Will you be getting the new Apple TV? And will you be tempted with that iPad Pro? Leave me some comments. Let's get the discussion going. Thanks for listening to me for so long. Uh, super excited, as you can see. You know, I'm I, I just really am genuinely pleased that Apple delivered on all fronts with some really good upgrades and, of course, that new product, the iPad Pro. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button, and I'll see you next time.